The Porsche Taycan's journey has been nothing short of an electrifying saga in the automotive realm. And now there's a new one. The Porsche Taycan came about four years ago and it instantly showcased the German sports car maker's prowess at creating electric cars. You know, the typical aerodynamic shape of a Porsche or the lack of grills and air dams at the front because Porsches are typically rear engine or that magic portion when it comes to razor fast reflexes and that telepathic handling. All of these things are characteristic to the steeds that come out of Stuttgart. So adapting all of that for a fast four-door electric vehicle wasn't really rocket science and the Taycan delivered. In fact, Porsche have delivered over 150,000 of these around the globe, out of which about 191 are delivered in India. That amounts to about 10% of their local sales. Those kind of numbers coming for a premium, expensive, four-door electric like this is no joke. Now, we can always argue that it was easy pickings for the Taycan back then because there was hardly any competition. But in today's times, all the German luxury car makers have varied options across varied body styles. And then you have the Asian options or even cars from Korea that are giving you excellent performance. So for the Taycan to still maintain that benchmark as the best electric vehicle you can buy, they needed to do a lot more than a simple nip and tuck job for its midlife makeover. And that's exactly what they've done. In fact, when the engineers were presented with a budget for the midlife makeover, they used 50% of that to improve the performance and the efficiency. But has it all worked? Let's find out. Porsche's decided that rather than fiddling around the edges, they would rather take a chainsaw to the Taycan's refresh. So what you get is a Taycan that accelerates more rapidly, charges with increased speed and stability, and offers more range than before. For example, the Taycan Turbo S in its latest guise is not merely provoking its petrol-powered cousins, but is now blitzing past them, hitting the ton in 2.4 seconds. Hmm, so that means it's actually quicker than most of the 911s you can buy right now. Honestly, I don't like the sound of it, pun intended. These EVs are getting bloody quick. In India, the Taycan Turbo will lead the charge, catapulting from 0 to 100 in a swift 2.7 seconds. And even the more sedate offerings, like the Taycan 4S and the base Taycan, still deliver more verve and vigor than before, with more power and quicker acceleration. The increase in acceleration across the board is attributable to a rise in system output. The base model alone sees a jump of 60 kilowatt, while the turbo flexes its muscles with an astonishing 884 PS. It's a clear message that Porsche isn't just about maintaining pace in the EV race, their intent is setting a blistering one. The visual cues of the Taycan's evolution are subtle yet significant. Porsche has finished the design by sharpening the aesthetics. The flattened headlights and the broadened front wings articulate the Taycan's stance, making it appear assertive and wide. The rear end, while subtly refreshed, is accentuated by the Porsche logo in a new illuminated guise, an element of flair that polarizes opinion. Aerodynamics have been the cornerstone of Porsche design, and the new Taycan continues in this tradition. This little crease that you see right on top of the headlight that wasn't there on the outgoing car. This one improves the aerodynamic efficiency. And the tires on these, these are the Pirelli P0R. Now these are specifically designed with Porsche for the Taycan. These are lower resistance than the outgoing car and yet manage to give you better grip around winding roads. All of this combined gives you better efficiency. In fact, the wheels and tires alone are contributing to 40 kilometers extra range on the overall claim. Speaking of range, the new Taycan climbs to an optimistic 678 kilometers on the WLTP cycle, flaunting a 35% range improvement. This is courtesy of the collective efforts of NR's aerodynamics, an optimized powertrain, advanced energy recuperation, and the latest range management software. The Taycan's performance battery, too, has been on the growth spurt, ballooning from a respectable 93 kilowatt hour to a more substantial 105 kilowatt hour and yet being lighter than before. Yet, real-world conditions tell their own tale. 
During our short test, the Taycan 4S flaunted a range mode figure of around 453 kilometers, which is still impressive, but rapidly depleting to around 270 kilometers when driven in sport mode for around 42 kilometers. A more exhaustive range evaluation is impending then, once the vehicle graces Indian tarmac which would provide a comprehensive depiction of its range capabilities in the local conditions. Equally worthy of note is the Taycan's enhanced recharging capabilities. Another bit of improvement that Porsche has managed in the Taycan is with the charging types. So now you can have up to 320 kilowatt fast charging. That's if the charger supports it, if the infrastructure supports it. But when you do, what Porsche have done is they've increase that the number of minutes for which you can use that kind of fast charging so in about 18 minutes you can go from 10 to 80 percent what they've done now is employed better thermal management with the batteries which essentially means that the batteries can stay cooler for longer during the fast charging period which means you can actually get that kind of fast charging get that kind of juice back into the batteries in a short amount of time 18 minutes that's the kind of time that you would take to just go grab a coffee Take a bio break and come back to the parking. There you're again good to go for a long haul. However, it's important to note that these charging times are based on an ambient temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. In hotter climates like in India, charging times might be longer, even if you were to find a 320 kilowatt fast charger in the future. Does this additional power make a tangible difference? Absolutely. Otherwise, why would you be paying top buck for an EV from Porsche? Now honestly, I simply don't find EVs as involving to drive as their ICE counterparts. But if you like the way they drive, the performance enhancements make the Taycan more fun than before. While the enhanced range means you don't have to take brakes that often. There are a bunch of other things too that aim to up the fun quotient. Like for example, with the Sport Chrono package, you get the push to pass function. Now when you are at highway speeds like I am at right now, when you have a slow moving vehicle or a long vehicle in front of you, what you can engage is the boost mode. This little switch right here in the middle of the drive mode, select on the satellite button. Press that and for 10 seconds, you get a massive boost of power. 70 kilowatt to be precise for 10 seconds. So you can quickly pull your overtake and get back into your lane. There's also this sonic sound that complements this quick boost. So yep. Yeah. That's the kind of tech that electric vehicles give you. Instantaneous power, even better. This makes maneuvers like overtaking, corner exits, and just accelerating in a straight line more thrilling. This feature underscores the Taycan's ability to deliver power instantaneously, a characteristic of EVs that redefines traditional driving dynamics. The new Taycan's ride quality significantly benefits from the introduction of the active ride function. This new feature builds upon the plush air suspension of the previous Taycan, which is now standard, but the addition of active ride brings new dimensions to the Taycan's handling and comfort. Air suspension is now standard on the Taycan, but what you can also opt for is active ride. So essentially, it begins with opening the door. Whenever you open the door, the car is going to raise itself by about 50 millimeters, and that is to make the ingress and egress a little bit more convenient. Now, we've seen this tech in the past. What Active Ride also gets you is an active lean control. So, essentially, when you are approaching winding roads, the car is going to lean into the corner like a motorcycle. Again, something that you've heard us say in the past with some other sports cars like the S Coupe AMG, for example. You also have the active skyhook, which essentially is going to only let the wheels move up and down while the rest of the body remains stable. Again, something that you've heard us say in the past with some of the other vehicles. So the differentiating factor here is that in the past, vehicles like the Audi E8L, for example, have employed 48 volt electronics to have tech like this. However, now with current generation technology with an electric vehicle, you have 800 volt electronics. So they've completely done away with the 48 volt system. With that kind of power, with that kind of technology, Essentially, the suspension is reacting a lot, lot quicker to all these kind of inputs, to all these kind of data points, which means that all these actions are happening at a blisteringly fast pace. Even before you, you can blink, the car's already thought about what it needs to do with the suspension. 
which is what makes it technologically better than similar tech that we've seen in the past. Switching to sport mode alters the Taycan's character to that of a traditional Porsche, allowing you more natural chassis movements and providing that familiar Porsche driving dynamics. With these massive wheels, the ride quality obviously is on the firmer side. It could be firmer still when it comes to India, obviously they might give you options with smaller wheels also. But what I've noticed here is that in the range mode, the ride quality is actually a little bit harsher. You're better off in the normal mode. But that's because in the range mode, the car is hunkering down completely as low as it can go to increase that aerodynamic efficiency. Whereas in normal mode, it's still staying slightly higher which enables a slightly better give in the suspension, which translates to better ride quality overall. In the high -end electric sports car segment, the Porsche Taycan faces formidable competition, primarily from the Tesla Model S Plaid and the Audi e-tron GT. Each model has its unique strengths, but the Taycan's all-round improvements give it a distinct edge. Porsche's focus on a holistic driving experience, including superior driving dynamics, luxurious interiors, and the brand's prestigious heritage, offers a more comprehensive package that appeals to a broad spectrum of consumers. In the Indian market, the competition is even less intense for the Taycan. Tesla is yet to make an entry, and the Audi e-tron GT doesn't have the same level of visibility or desirability as the Taycan. This situation effectively leaves Porsche's offering without any direct competition in our region, enhancing its appeal. Porsche's commitment to real-world usability is evident in the Taycan's increased range and reduced charging times, addressing common concerns like range anxiety and the inconvenience of long charging periods. These enhancements cater not only to the practical aspects of owning an EV, but also align well with the expectations of Porsche's customer base. Porsche has also been proactive in standardizing features that add value and enhance the ownership experience. This includes the adaptive air suspension for a comfortable ride, improved thermal management for better efficiency, and the Porsche Intelligent Range Manager for optimized performance. These features contribute to making the Taycan an attractive option, not just as a performance vehicle, but as an everyday electric car as well. To sum it up, the 2025 Porsche Taycan sets a new standard in the performance EV sector. It combines an upgraded powertrain, elegant design, and the latest technology to offer a driving experience that's both exciting and practical for daily use. With these enhancements, the Taycan not only meets the expectations of those seeking a high-performance electric vehicle, but also establishes a new benchmark for others in its class to aspire to. So to answer the question we began with, is it still one of the best EVs you can buy? Well, clearly it is. The kind of performance that it offers and with that kind of design, that kind of build, that kind of finish, it's a Porsche after all. So it is still one of the best EVs that you can buy. What can you buy, however, in India? Well, at launch, Porsche will introduce the Taycan base. There'll be the Taycan 4S and the Taycan Turbo. Will the Taycan GT arrive to our shores? Well, only time will tell. If there is enough demand, it might actually come there. The 911 GT3 RS is there, so why not the GT? I think it might make for an excellent track tool if you want to go that electrification way.